Okay, hello and welcome to this Bucket plugin development tutorial. Um, in this video what we're going to be covering is uh, a small introduction to commands and we're going to be creating a command sort of toggle um, for the Exploding Arrows plugin which we're going to be creating. So the way this is going to work is there's going to be a chat command which the player can enter in the console, the sorry, the server chat um, and that will enable the Exploding Arrows for them. That means that any arrows that they shoot will explode when they hit their target um, and also we're going to light them on fire as they fly through the air as well. Um, just one quick note before we get started, as you can see now by my window uh, Minecraft.net is apparently down and that's the reason that we created, um, oh sorry, we set up our server in the first video in offline mode so we can just click play offline and we'll still be able to join our testing server so don't worry too much about that. Um, yeah, so that's just why. Anyway. So what we're going to do is go ahead and explain what we've got so far, because I'm not starting from the absolute basics with this uh, with this one. So this is the starting point that I said we'd use from the sort of original video. Um, and as you can see, what we've got is the sort of basics of the plugin class that extends our Java plugin class, and we've got the on enable and on disable methods defined. Um, we've also got our logger defined, and just created an instance of that here. And that class is exactly the same as we created it in the TNT Notifier uh, plugin tutorial. So I'll just open that up and show you what it looks like. Uh, it looks like this. So it is literally exactly the same. So for the explanation for this, I just head over to the um, TNT Notifier video if you really that interested. Anyway, so what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, well, the command sort of toggle system. So what we're going to do is, because we can't have this, like, just change one variable because it needs to be per player so if one player turns it on we don't want every arrow on the server to become an exploding one so what we're going to need to do is store a list of player names and if the player is in that list that will indicate that their arrow should explode so we're going to make this a property of our main plugin so that we can access it from our various listeners and from our command handling thingy that we're going to create in a bit so what we're going to do is create a new protected um, variable or property here. Protected by the way means that um, only classes that are defined within this class so for example this here would be able to access um, this property but other plugins won't be able to access it. Um, it's just a sort of kind of security thing I guess. Um, anyway so what we're going to do is create a array list which is essentially just a list of names so we're going to make this an array list of uh, let's say strings. Actually, no. Let's say players. No, let's say strings. We'll store their names, and we can get the actual player from the uh, string, the name, if we need to. Uh, the reason, by the way, that we're doing names and not strings. Sorry, names and not actual player objects is just that the name is going to be shorter. So yeah. Anyway, so we've created our array list, and we're going to call this. Um, I don't know. So let's say enabled players. Okay. Now that we've defined the property, we need to actually create the instance of it. In other words, we need to create an empty array list. At the moment, this is just nothing. Um, this will need to be imported as well, so let's just let Eclipse do that for us. There we go. So just here, we can do this. Enabled players equals new array list. And you still have to give the type. So there we go. And now we'll be able to... Uh, put player names into this and take them out with the command and we'll also be able to check this to see if the arrow should explode. Okay, so what we do first is create the whole command structure and then hopefully that'll be done by the end of this part and then the next part we'll do the fun stuff which is the explosions. Explosions are always fun, right? Okay, so what we'll do is create a new class that's going to handle the command so we'll just go ahead and create a new class file here inside of our package and we'll just call this um, well we're going to call the command exploding arrow I guess so let's just call this exploding arrows handler because it's going to be a command handler or executor actually not handler so let's call it an executor okay so just click finish and that will be created and this class will need to implement or extend I can't actually remember implements the command executor so we'll have to import this and we may need to change that to extend 
and no nope, we don't so you get this error um, because you need to define a method inside of this and to do that what we can do is just go to add unimplemented methods like so and I'll add this method here looks a bit untidy so what we can do is just tidy it up by removing this and that comment and we can put that on the same line like so uh, and then we're going to rename all of these arguments because arg0123 are not very friendly so we're going to change them to things that are a bit more meaningful so the first one is the command sender and that's just something that represents whatever sent the command so that will usually either be the player a player or the terminal the console so what we'll do is change that to sender and then we'll change this here to command because it's the actual command oops okay this next one is something called the label um, that's what I've seen it labeled as oh um, in every other sort of tutorial type thing never actually used it not sure what it does but there you go final one is the arguments so we'll just call that args okay so now we've got that we can actually code our sort of command in here but there is one problem because we need to access the list the array list which is stored in our plugin here and not in this command thingy so we need to pass in the instance of the plugin so we can access it in here because at the moment we can't um, we can't get to this property so instead of just creating um, the instance like with no parameters we're going to pass in the plugin so to create, we need to create a constructor to accept that plugin instance and set it to a property. So the first thing I'll do is create a new private property here, and this is going to be called. Uh, sorry, its type is going to be exploding arrows, and its name is going to be plugin. And then we're going to create a constructor which has to be public, and you don't give it a type, and its name has to be that the same as the class. So that's that no it's not it's that no it isn't still it's that yes good and then we're going to uh, we're going to have this take one parameter which is going to be the type exploding arrows and we're going to give it the name plugin and then we can just set the the class property plugin equal to the variable plugin like so and now that means that we can use the property plugin down here to get to our list so for example we can do plugin enabled players like that and that's accessing our list okay but we'll deal with that in a moment because the next thing we'll do is define our well we're going to set up our sort of well this class to enable the command essentially so what we need to do is create our plugin.yml file and define the command in there so we'll do that first in the source folder new other we'll just create a new file and call it plugin.yml and then we'll have to wait for my editor to open up so we can close it. I still haven't fixed that. I'll just drag that across there and move it to the left. And we're going to call our plugin Exploding Arrows. So let's just call it that, like so. And we're going to give it the version of 0 0.1. And the main is the what it always is. So this is going to be this. Uh, like so, not bookie, book it. Exploding arrows, exploding arrows. Hope you not make too many typos, I did kind of rush that. We'll find out when we start the server. Okay, so this is the important thing. We have to define a commands section, because your plugin is only allowed to register commands that are defined in the plugin.yml file. So, just tab that in, but with four spaces, not an actual tab. Um, so our first, well, the command we're going to be defining is going to be called exploding arrows, and then we need to define two properties under this section. The first one is the um, description, and this is going to be toggles the exploding arrows feature. The next thing you need to define is the usage, and we'll just type in this because you, there's not really any complicated usage, you just literally do slash and then the command name. Okay, so now I've defined that, in our main plugin class, we'll be able to actually create an instance of this class to handle the command and set it to do that. So it might sound a bit complicated, but the way we do that is by using the get command method, which is part of the Java plugin class. So we can do get command. The name of the command is the parameter, which is exploding arrows. 
and then from that, because this whole thing here is now an you know um, an actual command, an instance of the command object, um, we can then use the set executor property, and then into there we can pass the new instance of our command executor that we've been creating. So we can do new exploding arrows executor like so. We need to pass in this to that, which is the actual instance of our plugin. And that's why I explained before, it's so that we can access the array list. Okay, so now that's done, we should be able to sort of carry on with coding our um, actual uh, this thingy. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is check to make sure that the person that sent the command is actually a player. Because this toggles a sort of feature for a single player. So the server console using this command doesn't make a whole amount of sense, or a huge amount of sense. So what we're going to do is check to see if they're a player. So we'll do if sender instance of player, uh, player like so. And if that is equal to false, we're going to display an error saying, "Sorry, this ca command can't be used from the console." Okay. So we'll just do sender send message, and that'll send a message to the console. And just to make it a bit nicer, let's make it red. So we'll do chat color red. And the message is sorry, spelt right. This command can only be used in game. And then to stop the rest of this code processing, we need to return. And because it's a Boolean um, method, we need to return true. Um, and the true or false here is whether or not you want the server to display the usage information. Um, so if you set this to true, it won't show the usage line. If you set it to false, it will. I think the reason behind that is, it seems kind of backwards, but I think the reason behind that is you should return true if this method has handled the command or not. I um, mean, it has here, because we're, we've checked an error and it's failed. So, yeah. Anyway. So down here, we can then, well, now the under there, basically, we know that the sender is a player, so we can create a new variable called player with the type player and we can set that equal to player like that and what that's doing is casting the sender to a player so now we can use the uh, methods down here that are specific to a player um, you don't actually need to do that because you can get the name of the console as well but um, just for the sake of sort of correctness I guess or I don't know making it the most obvious we're going to be doing that um, I think what I'll do is end this part here because it's getting a little bit longer than I usually like to do these. So I think in the next part we'll deal with the actual command processing. So anyway, thank you for watching and yeah, come back for part two.